Oh my gosh, guys, come check this out. I found a murder leaf. This leaf can kill. All right, guys, in this video, we are out searching the rainforest at night in Western Borneo. This location is known for having some of the most unique animals on the planet. And our goal for tonight is to locate as many of them as possible to get up close to the cameras. Let's get searching. If you're out looking for creatures anywhere, the best time to do it is at night. Can you see blue eyes? Yeah. All right, we've got a uh, blue-eyed angle-headed lizard. It's a type of dragon, but you can see it's got some super eccentric details. It's almost like it has a wacky hairdo with those spines up and down the back, but it's sleeping right there on that limb. We're just gonna leave it alone. It's a little too high up anyway. Let's go. When you're out night herping, best tool you can have, headlamp. Headlamp or flashlight. The main purpose of using these lights is to illuminate the forest, but also really to get that eye shine popping off the eyes of all the nocturnal creatures that live out here in this jungle. Oh, we got something right here. Let's see if I can get it to climb onto my hand. Another strange creature of the night. We have a spiny stick insect here. This is just a juvenile. It's not a very big one. And look how it, it just remains fully still. Thinks it's camouflaged on a branch. But you're not, I see you. Wow, just like pinch me with its feet. Ah, spiny, ah, spike me with those sharp legs. It's got spines all up and down the legs too. All right, we've had a good look. Let's put this spiky stick back on the plant. All right, guys, one of our spotters out here hiking with us tonight just signaled that they saw something on, what do we got? Oh, perfect. Yes. This is, this is awesome. Okay, guys, it's staying put, this is great. I can probably just get right next to it. All right. Look at the size of this amphibian. You guys can get closer. As long as I don't touch it, it's gonna stay right there. Can you guys see without my light? Oh, perfectly. Okay, look at how big that leaf frog is. Now this is a Wallace's flying frog. Its feet and the webs on them are so big and wide that it can actually fly through the canopy as a glider. Okay, I'm gonna attempt Pick it up, you guys ready? Ready, Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Check that out. How cool is that frog? Let me see if I can get it to just crawl on me. You seeing that? Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> gotcha. Don't worry, buddy. We just want to see how cool you are. Don't worry. I'm going to put you right back on your stick. <laughs> the pads on the feet, in case you're wondering, are super sticky. It feels like sap on the bottom of its feet. Super tacky. And that is going to be good for climbing all of the wet leaves and sticks out here in this rainforest. But of course, in addition to climbing, this frog can glide. The Wallace's flying frog has such large hands and back feet pads that it can soar through the canopy. Now that is one really cool leaf frog. And that's coming from someone who's seen a lot of frogs. The Wallace's flying frog here in Borneo. Let's put it back on its branch and keep searching for other creatures of the night. Too cool. All right, so. Sometimes you can find mammals. There's like tarsiers that live out here. There's all kinds of cool, unique stuff. And of course, this being our first major trip to Borneo, everything we find is brand new. Oh, got something on this branch. Oh my gosh, guys, come look at this. You guys have enough light to see what this is? 
Okay, what we have here, guys, is a dead leaf mantis. What you're looking at right there is actually a praying mantis that looks almost identical to a leaf. But let me see if I can get it to climb up on my fingers. Oh yeah. Now you can see it. Whoop. Oh, it's a hopper. I would not expect a mantis like this to fly, although I'm sure it has tiny wings. It's definitely well adapted to look just like a leaf. Now there are actually over 2,400 different species of mantis on the planet, but this one has to be the coolest I've ever seen. Now you can really see that it's a mantis. Before, when it was on the leaf, it was inverted and you couldn't see the arms, perfectly camouflaging it as a dead leaf hanging off that plant. But it, as much as it looks like a leaf, it is not dead. It is very alive and make no mistake, this is a mantis, it is an assassin, it is out here looking for prey and they are relentless and they're highly intelligent. You combine that with being excellently camouflaged and you have a very formidable creature. That is cool. Oh, beautiful. Now this is a fully grown mantis. This is as big as they get. Oh, hello. It's looking right at me. You're not gonna hop on me, are you? We're trying to get the shot. Look that way. Oh. <laughs> it's going for my pants because it's the same color. I've been spotted. We see you. I mean, you can even see on its back, just like the striations of the leaf and like the dead spots. I mean, it has so many little particular details that make it look like a leaf. A truly remarkable adaptation. Andrew, have you ever seen anything like that? No, that's so well camouflaged. I don't know how you saw it. Well, I saw it because it's on this bright green leaf, so it wasn't <laughs> the best spot to hide for this leaf mantis, but you could see if it was down here in the leaf litter, how it would just disappear. Actually, let's do that. Let's let it go and put it in the leaves and see how it just disappears. Ready? Or can you just put a few leaves around it? Just like disappears in the leaf litter. And you can you imagine if it was dry? Like here's a dry leaf. I mean, look at that. Unbelievable, huh? So cool. All right, I've got to get a picture with this. Um, gonna get my phone out. Not often you see a mantis as bizarre as that one. You know, I've seen a lot of interesting mantis over the years, but I cannot recall one as cool looking as this. The dead leaf mantis of Borneo. How about that? Now we're gonna put it back on its leaf where we found it. Come here, Hoppy. We're gonna name this one Hopper. Here you go, Hopper. In today's video, we are searching deep into the jungles of Borneo on the other side of the planet, looking for some of the most prehistoric creatures that still are alive today. I'm talking about creepy crawly animals that could have lived right next to the dinosaurs. And if we're lucky enough, we might even come across the grail animal, the animal that I want to find the most, the trilobite beetle. All right, you guys ready? Cool? Let's get into it. Come on. I'm gonna be looking for stumps, old rotten logs, flat rocks, things that we can flip that might conceal some of the creatures that we're trying to find. Let's make our way down here to this creek. Nothing. Let's go over here. Oh. Really thought that when that started to move, that was gonna be a home run. All right, so we're making our way deeper into the rainforest here at Kinabalu. Ooh, big earthworm. Whoa. That's, oh, that's a monster. Yeah. Hefty. It is not squishy at all. It is really like super tough. Here, Andrew, feel that. Whoa. Oh, it's getting slimy. Whoa. Is that crazy? Super slimy. Yeah. Oh, oh no. What is 
<laughs> this worm just took up. Oh, look at this grub. Ugh, even better. Check out that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh gosh. Thanks, buddy. All right. I think we're done with this grub. This was one gross log. Yeah. Let's keep going. I know the trilobite beetle is out here. We've just got to find it. If you're ever out flipping in any environment, whether it's rocks, logs, leaves, whatever it might be, always be considerate and try to replace the environment just how you found it. Fuck your stuff there, major roots. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Guys, look at the size of that millipede. Hang on, let me see if I can get it. Now some of these can emit a really nasty odor, so I don't want to spook it. Let me see if I can get it crawling on my hand. Look at the length of that millipede. Probably approaching five inches in length. And millipedes, of course, get their name because of all those legs. Millipede means a thousand feet. Borneo is actually home to the longest millipede in the world. Now, I don't need to worry about this millipede biting me. The only thing you really need to worry about when it comes to millipedes are their toxicity. Some of them are poisonous, but they do feel really strange. Feeling all those little legs grip onto my fingers and crawl across. Andrew, stick your hand out real quick. I wanna show you what this is like. Let's put it on your finger. Don't worry, it won't bite. There you go. What's that like? Whoa, that's crazy feeling. They have amazing grip. And they use that grip to climb up and over logs and terrain out here in the rainforest. Well, that's a good start to our adventures here in Borneo. Let's go find something truly unique. Come on. All right, so far, so weird. We are finding all kinds of cool stuff. This environment is perfect for a trilobite beetle. They love tropical forests just like this, with tall tree canopies that allow very little light to reach the ground. Ow! Oh, nothing. No trilobite beetles yet. I really thought we'd see one by now. Covering a ton of ground. Probably hiked at least four miles already. Oh man, look at this snag. Oh. Here we go, another kind of millipede. This one's even cooler than the last one. What you're looking at is an armored millipede. They're called armored millipedes because you can see the segments of its body have these pronounced ridges, making it look like body armor. This is something that you could imagine seeing in the time of the dinosaurs. It looks like a living fossil. And here's something really cool about these armored millipedes. Let me show you, if, if there's ever a situation where this millipede feels threatened, look at what it'll do. It rolls itself into a tight little ball, and you can see how all those armored plates that are really rigid can protect the soft underbelly. It's starting to must, smell, smell that. Actually, it doesn't smell that bad. Whoa, it smells sweet. Right? Like cherries. I'm not kidding, guys. This millipede smells like those red cherries that come in the syrup. What are they, maraschino? Maraschino cherries. Maraschino cherries. That's exactly what it smells like. I can't believe that. I expected it to smell like musty and foul, but it actually smells kind of good. If anybody knows, tell us in the comments why this millipede is putting off an odor that makes it smell like cherries. So weird, but so cool at the same time. All right, guys, well, I would say this adventure is heating up. Every creature we're finding is getting more and more bizarre. Let's put this armored millipede back and keep heading down trail. Sometimes when you're flipping, you forget to just look. So I try to always make a rule of like three flips, observe. Oh, wow. Got a bit of a break in the canopy here, a lot of light. Oh, look at that hole. But something lives in there. Whoa, 
Look at this log snag. Oh! Guys, I got something right there. Here, can you uh, throw this in my backpack real quick? I'm gonna need both hands. Put your cameras right there. We got a trilobite beetle. Hang on. Nobody move. Got it. Got it. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. We got one. Huh. Yes. Dude. Oh. Trilobite beetle, baby. Woo. Oh man, I am pumped. If you guys are wondering, and if you can't tell, this never gets old. Finding a new creature for the first time, this is why I do what I do. This is what I love about making videos on Brave Wilderness, discovering creatures like the trilobite beetle. Wow, I feel like a little kid again, guys. Okay, first of all, it is a beetle. I know it looks a lot like the millipedes, that we found earlier on this adventure, but it is not a millipede. And it gets its name because it looks like a trilobite, which of course trilobites have been extinct for hundreds of millions of years. And we only know them by their fossil remains at this point. Now I've actually dug up trilobite fossils in Utah before that were over 500 million years old. And I have to say, those fossils really do look like the trilobite beetle that you see here today, especially those upper body segments. This is nearly a living version of an animal that looks like something super prehistoric. Right away, first glance, you're thinking millipede. Then you see how it slinks its body along and you're like, man, is that some kind of worm? Is that some kind of larva? It kind of looks like a helgramite like we've seen along the streams in North America, but it's definitely not. And then you go to the tip of the head there and you see that tiny little head with its beady little eyes and its two little antennas sticking out. Look at its abdomen, guys. It almost moves around like a little inchworm. It has like a little foot at the back of its tail and just beep, inches along. As it's crawling around, of course I feel the little tiny legs making contact with my skin, but I'm also getting this like wet sensation. And I've noticed, if I flip it upside down, that little foot. <laughs> yeah, that little pad right there, it's wet. I can feel it slinking across. And I don't know if it's like laying down a track of pheromone or what, but it's cold and it's moist and it's weird. <laughs> it's very weird. And they're very rigid. It's got a cool feel. Andrew, you gotta, you gotta try it. Whoa. See what you think. Whoa, it's like she has a suit of armor on. Totally, and it is armored. That is a defense mechanism because look at how slow she moves. This is not a fast creature. So it's gonna rely upon that armor to ward off predators. Also, the aposematic coloration. I'm gonna guess that this insect has a pretty foul taste. And what's even weirder than its appearance is how different it is from its male counterpart. Let's take a look at the male version of this trilobite beetle right here. What? Are you kidding me? And here's the thing, guys. Scientists were puzzled by this for over 200 years. When this creature was first discovered, they could not figure out what the male of the trilobite beetle looked like. In fact, it wasn't until the 1980s that a scientist actually followed around one trilobite beetle for days, days and days and days, and it saw them mate. That was the only way scientists were able to find out the male version of this species because the female is just so unique. And not anything against the male version of this insect. Cool looking beetle, right? But nothing is gonna top the cool factor of this female trilobite beetle. And this is probably gonna go down as one of the strangest creatures I will ever get to present to you on Brave Wilderness, the trilobite beetle. Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, 
Let's go, whoop. Let's go put this beetle right back where we found it. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure to search for the Brave Wilderness channel on YouTube so you can join me and the crew on our upcoming adventures.